so to get an overall matrix that shows the X Y and Z rotations what we have to do is multiply each of three these three matrices um, the X matrix times the Y matrix the Y matrix times the Z matrix and the Z matrix would equal the overall rotation matrix so let's uh, let's fill these in and come up with an example so let's say that our X rotation is 5 degrees let's say our Y rotation is 10 degrees and our Z rotation is 3 degrees so all the math whether in Excel or in the, uh, the Python program for the robot um, all the rotations are done in radians so if you're not familiar with radians um, do a, a Google search on it and, and there's lots of tutorial or there's lots of information on, on what radians are and how a radian measures the angle versus degrees but what we need to do and what, what you'll find throughout this project is that we've taken the all of the angles and degrees and we convert them to radians before we do any math and then when we want to see them again as degrees we have to you know convert them back to degrees so what I'll do right here is I will do equals and then I will do radians of 5 so that value right there is 5 degrees but in radians and then I will copy that down and now I have the radians of 10 and the radians of 3. So now for our X rotation we are going to say that this cell equals the cosine of that value there of our X rotation and so in this box here that is going to equal the negative sine of that same value. This box here is going to equal the sine of the same value. And this box here is going to equal the cosine of that value there. So we've got that one filled in. Now to do this one, that one is going to equal the cosine of this time the Y rotation and radians. This box over here will equal the sine. Oh, I screwed that up. This box down here is going to equal the negative sine of Y. This box will equal the, oops, the cosine of Y. And then we'll go down here and do the Z. So this one will equal the cosine of Z. This one will equal the sine of Z. Let me screw that up. Yeah, I got too many brackets there. Okay. This box will equal the negative sine. This one will equal the cosine of z. All right, so now I have my three rotations filled in. I've got a rotation makes matrix that represent x, y, and z. So now I need to figure out what the overall rotation is, and we got to do that in two steps. I got to multiply this matrix times this one and put it here, and then we'll, we'll multiply that times the final one to get an overall rotation matrix. So to uh, multiply matrices together 
you take the first row for this for this box right here for the, the left corner you take the first row times the first column and put that uh, and then add them together and put that value here and then for the uh, the second box here at the top you would still take the first row but times the second column and then for the third one you take the first row times the third column so I'll do an example here so this box here is going to equal that times that plus that times that plus that times that and that fills in that box and then we'll do the same thing for each one so for this one we will take this value oh, sorry, equals that value times that plus that one times that one plus that one times that one. And I'll do the same thing again equals So there I have my, my first row filled in. So I'll continue on and do the same thing. So this one is going to equal the second row times the first one of the first column plus the second one times that plus that times that. So I'm going to pause it here and I'll fill this out so you don't have to sit here and watch me muddle through this. Okay, so I finished filling these in. So now when I double click on it, you can see I've got first row times first column, second row times first column, or for the middle one here, you can see I've got middle row times middle column, or down here in the bottom, for example, we've got bottom row times last column those are all added together. So now we have a rotation matrix that represents the X and the Y rotations but not the Z. So now I got to do another one right here. So we'll do another rotation matrix and we'll do the same thing again only this time I will multiply my result times the Z uh, matrix. So this first one will equal this value times this value plus this value times this value plus this value times that value. And so that's the first one. So we would continue doing this all the way across until this matrix is also filled in with this matrix multiplied by this matrix. Again, row times column, row times column row times column and so on until this is completely filled in. So if I were to finish this out I would end up with a rotation matrix that fully shows mathematically in a, in a matrix format what the rotation of uh, 5 in the X, uh, 10 in the Y, and 3 in the Z and that's my mathematical representation of that full rotation. So going back to our earlier example here um, in the pictures that I had set up, um, the next thing you're probably asking is, okay, well that's great, you've got a 3x3 three three matrix that, um, well before I show you that, let's go back, I want to cover one other thing. Um, there's a concept that's good to know and that is what is the zero rotation matrix? So zero rotation matrix means in matrix format what represents zero, as in what represents no rotation at all. So if I multiplied any of these 
times this matrix what is going to come out the other side equaling itself and the zero rotation matrix looks like this it is ones diagonally across the matrix and zeros in every other box so that right there is the zero rotation matrix when you have zero or you have ones diagonally and all the rest zero so that's a zero rotation matrix so that's just a, a concept to, to take note of so now going back to this example here so we have figured out how to mathematically show the difference in rotation between two frames you know what the rotation of this frame would be um, but now you know how do I show the distance um, you know if my world moves you know the how do I show the distance so that's where we change from a rotation matrix to what we call a transformation matrix so what we're going to do is we're going to take this 3 by 3 matrix and um, well before we get to that before to multiply um, a matrix when we're talking about rotational or transformational matrices um, they need to be uh, of the same size I mean you, you can multiply you know different size uh, matrices together but there's there's other rules but for the sake of this example um, I'm just going to say that a rotation matrix has to be either a 3 by 3 you know to be well, a rotation matrix has to be 3 by 3 and a transformation matrix needs to be 4 by 4 so we'll uh, put in a border here so we've got our rotation up here in the upper left quadrant of our 4 by 4 matrix and so then we need now need to apply the um, X, Y, and Z positions of the, the actual position in space where it is. So right here is where we would put the X value, here's where we would put the Y value, and here's where we put the Z value. So for example, if, if the, the distance, the relationship between those, you know, let's say that they were, you know, 25 millimeters apart in the X direction and 50 millimeters apart in the in the y direction and 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 zero millimeters apart in the z direction those would go there so we've got those filled in so then the next question is okay well what do I put down here I, I gotta fill those in so that the matrix is even so it's a complete square four by four so I can multiply it by another transformation matrix so to fill these in um, we look here at our example on our zero transformation matrix and this gives us kind of a clue. We look on the bottom here and it's all zeros with a one in the corner. So if I, in this case, I always put in zero, 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 and a one, just for filler, to fill those in so that it's now possible, you know, for me to multiply that matrix um, by another matrix. Um, let me get rid of that. So now we have what is known as a transformation matrix it's a 4 by 4 matrix now this represents distance and rotation um, so back to this example if I was to apply a transformation matrix to our world here that is a 4 by 4 matrix that represents how the world is rotated compared to zero and the positional change the distance of where our world has uh, moved from zero right there.